Welcome to Trianic 7, the YouTube channel for Saab enthusiasts. My name is Jonathan and I'm here with my 2002 Saab 95 Aero in laser red. And yesterday on Friday night as I was coming home from work, the car died on me when leaving the highway. So uh, power loss, I had uh, flashing uh, check engine light and I also had the charging indicator going off and uh, the car lost power and I was able to steer into safety and just uh, park on the shoulder. And the car was towed here to the local garage. Uh, it's open here on the weekend. The, the gates are open so I'm going to do some work and diagnostic myself. And it seems to be the fuel pump. I did an ethanol conversion of this car a few months ago and recently I had some uh, or I ran the car on a bit of E85 ethanol just to try it out. I knew that the original pump might break if you use E85 instead of normal gasoline. But I switched back to petrol or gasoline yesterday and uh, about two hours later the car died. So yeah, probably it's the fuel pump not liking the ethanol content. Getting to the fuel pump in the Saab 95 is very easy. You just fold up the left seats here in the rear and then you open uh, a part of the cover and then there's another cover here that you just pry off by hand and here is the top part of the assembly. You can see some electrical connectors, you can also see some fuel valves and also the locking ring. This famous round locking ring that is often hard to remove. So what you want to do uh, to remove the fuel pump is to first cover the entire back seat here with plastic. I've also added a piece of oil absorbing uh, mat here from the car parts store. It's a bit dark. I'm uh, shooting this on a bit of time crunch since I want to get this done today before nightfall. There are a couple of things here. Uh, mainly everything is done in plastic and plastic at this age is very brittle. The most famous example are these two check valves. There's one white which is the feed valve and then the black one which is the return valve. You will want to take a small screwdriver and push this plastic clip to the side use a lot of penetrating oil or WD-40 just to drench it and make it go smooth and then you want to just wiggle these return lines carefully very carefully back and forth just wiggle them after maybe one or two minutes of wiggling slowly start applying pressure upwards and very very carefully pull them out there's a big risk that the, these check valves will break and that will be very annoying to say the least because they're quite hard to replace at the point here I actually removed both of those check valves without problem. Then you fold them aside uh, underneath somewhere here so they're not in the way. Next step is to unplug this electrical connector and put the wiring harness to the side. Then a friend of mine, Matthias, came by and he helped me to turn the key and I measured the voltage on these cables and that was 12 volts. And since there's no buzzing from the fuel pump, it means electric power, check, no pump, check which means the fuel pump is broken. He also had this special tool and we're now trying to use this tool to grab onto the little um, say sprockets on the plastic ring and we're now slowly trying to break the ring loose. <laughs> Breaking the ring loose is apparently very difficult. We've been at this for maybe 30 minutes and uh, since it's all in plastic we need to be careful. At the moment Matthias, who is extremely kind, just came by to help me and lend me his tool. He's now back home for a few minutes just to get a very large screwdriver so we can put the tool down and then use a screwdriver to pry it around. Hopefully this will work. I've also had penetrating oil and WD-40 all around several times, really drenched it to make it as smooth as possible, maybe to loosen up. Remember this fuel pump was changed maybe two, three years ago and I didn't think it was going to be this hard, but apparently it is. Again, patience is a virtue here. Just be very careful. Okay, see you in the next update. Okay, so this is the day after. I'm sorry I wasn't able to film much of the procedure after my last update. Uh, I can now report that, if, that the new fuel pump is back in and the car is working just as it should. So let me try to go back and talk you through some of the steps we did. First of all, the fuel pump we purchased was a uh, Walbro GSS341. It pumps 255 liters an hour at, um, I think that's three bars of pressure. And this pump should work with E85. Uh, 
it's not 100% guaranteed to work, but uh, common experience from other people say that it should. Taking the pump out, of course, uh, the diff most difficult part again was this plastic lockering here. We used this tool that we talked about and the very big uh, screwdriver. We were not able to turn it around in any way. Uh, so instead we had to resort to using this big screwdriver to put it here like a chisel and then start hammering on it. And then going around, around, around and just being very patient. Eventually the ring started to flex a little bit. It didn't rotate but it sort of elongated and uh, moved around slightly within its position. That gave us hope. So we just continued going around using the hammer uh, quite hard. Uh, eventually, it took maybe 20 30 minutes of just hammering, uh, the ring actually started to move. But I mean, it is so easy to break these notches. Uh, if you have tried to change the fuel pump before, you know probably that you broke some of these. Luckily, we didn't. I think it was the combination of the, of the tool that could put torque and then combining it with the uh, impact force with a hammer. So when the ring was loose that was actually the hardest part done of this entire procedure. Then it was just a matter of getting the whole fuel assembly out. It's quite a big thing. When we pulled it out it was almost like this high. Uh, and this of course will leak a lot of fuel since it's almost like a bucket. So in addition to the plastic you saw I also had this oil absorbing mat very close nearby. I don't want to spill any gasoline on the leather seats or on the carpeting. Um, also had a big bucket just to put the assembly back in. Usually pulling out the assembly should be quite easy. You just pull it up about five centimeters and then twist it 80 degrees clockwise and then you can pull it up. We had a bit of trouble because one of the hoses was supposed to be in a notch on the side but had um, jumped to somewhere else and made the assembly a little too big to fit through the hole. So we had to basically put our fingers down and just pry this hose carefully to the notch uh, so that the diameter wouldn't be too big for the hole. Then we just pull it out and angle it out. It will drip. You will get gasoline on the outside here so you need to cover it with plastic and one of these oil absorbing mats. Then it was just a matter of taking out the assembly. This is the old dead fuel pump. In a few days I'll go to the electronics lab and see if I can put some 12 volts on the on the electric connectors here and see if anything happens, but it appears to be completely dead. There's one thing you don't want to miss when you install the new pump, uh, and there's a little plastic cover here on the bottom. I, re I read of some people doing everything right and installing the fuel pump correctly and just forgetting to remove this cover here. And of course it leaves you with a dead car again and you have to redo everything. So don't forget to remove the plastic cap. Uh, then you need a piece of flexible hose for installation. I had to cut the old hose from the fuel pump and install uh, maybe this long hose back to the T connector. Also with the pump I got some electrical connectors uh, since the original pump here has two different size connectors. Uh, I don't remember which one I had to cut since the new pump had two connectors of similar size. So a bit of electrical connection then just fiddling around, I had to do some, uh, sorry about the noise, my neighbor is pulling out of the driveway. I had to do some filing on the pre-filter that is down in the bottom of the assembly, uh, since the new pump is slightly bigger than this stock one. That was very easy, it's just plastic, you can easily make it slightly bigger and everything will fit together. Then all you have to do is put the assembly back down. Remember that the uh, leveling sensor is a bit uh, fragile so you don't want to break that one when you put it back in. Just get it down carefully. I also recommend that you connect the electrical connector to see if there's motion from the pump and then just start the ignition for a few seconds. You can run it dry just really quickly to see that you actually get power to everything and everything's connected the right way. Then after putting everything down first you add the lock ring back. You can use some non-acid Vaseline to grease the little o-ring. We did not change the O-ring because all the sub dealers were closed on a Saturday. But I might recommend you changing that big O-ring down under the, the lock ring. Then you put the check valves back. Again, the white one is the feed valve and the black one is the return valve. And on my car, they're located like this, white and black. Also, there's an alignment mark. I don't know if you can see it here, but there's a notch 
in the plastic cover here. That should line up with the notch here on the inside, or in my case, the right side of the car. If you don't do this correctly, you will not have the tank leveling sensor working correctly. Make a test start, and this is where I was overjoyed to see that the engine actually works again. It was as simple as the fuel pump. Then go and be happy that changing the fuel pump is quite simple on the 9.5. You have easy access here. I was surprised to, to see that it actually wasn't that difficult sitting here. I thought it was going to be quite cramped having to fold the seats back up, but actually sitting here wasn't too bad. I was able to get everything done nicely. At this stage you want to put this cover back on. I think it's more of a noise cover than anything else. Okay, this cover might take a bit of persuasion to get on, but I'm happy with this. And then just put the carpeting back on. And that's it, you can just fold your seat back. Remember, it might smell a bit of gasoline if you spilled anything on the, on the uh, mats here. I recommend doing the fuel pump procedure with all the car doors open just to keep good ventilation going because gasoline smells a little funny. Hopefully if you get any smell inside the car this will air out within the next few days or weeks. So it isn't too bad. But of course, protect everything. Plastic, uh, I use this trash cans or trash bags or, and the oil absorbing mats. Alright, it's been a few weeks and the fuel pump is working fine. I've been driving the car for maybe 1,000 kilometers, 2,000 kilometers, and there'll be no issues whatsoever. One of the readers at my project thread at the Swedish Saab Turbo Club forum came up with an idea, and that was that the old pump failed because the previous owner switched to an aftermarket pump and not a stock pump back three years ago in 2012. So I did a bit of digging and I was able to find the old receipts and I talked to the workshop who did it and yes, this old pump is an aftermarket pump. And this is why it failed almost right away when I started filling up the car with E85 ethanol fuel. So that solves this mystery. If this had been an original fuel pump I would have expected to run it for quite a while on E85 before beginning to give me trouble. So let me sum up this DIY video for changing the fuel pump. First of all, I'm sorry I wasn't able to film all the steps. Ideally I want to show every step to you viewers, I feel I owe it to you. But in this case it was pitch black outside, I couldn't film anything, I also had a bit of a time crunch since I needed to get the car running. So I'm sorry again, but I think a video like this is better than no video at all. So this has been an overview of the procedure for changing the fuel pump in the Saab 95, model years 1998 to 2010, with the exception for the biopower cars. If you have an E85 car, just like my wife's blue 95 biopower just there, the procedure will be difficult because you will need to drop the tank. The problem is that the biopower pump, as far as I know, won't fit into that hole, so you need to get it all down before you can do anything. Before I do anything else I want to thank all the Saab guys and Saab folks out there in the Saab communities. Having your car break down on you is never a fun experience. Luckily I had uh, roadside assistance included so I was towed home for free which is always good. Then there was a ton of support for, from people coming out to help me. First of all Oscar recorded a sound clip of his Saab just to see how the fuel pump sounds and then I could compare it to mine. Then of course Matthias came out, he was just gonna lend me his tool, but he eventually stayed for four hours and helped me put everything back together. So big thanks to Matthias. Also, this was done on a Saturday when the shops are usually closed, but there's a little store here in Jönköping, Sweden, called Race Stuff, and Michael, who runs this store, was kind enough to open it just for me, so that I can go and purchase a fuel pump from him. So, and of course, all the other folks who have commented and cheered me on. <laughs> Some of you guys joked that, oh great, now we get to see a new DIY movie from Jonathan. Well, a lot of fun to hear that when you're breaking down. <laughs> but all in good humor, I guess. So then, this has been yet another video from Trianic7, the YouTube channel for Saab enthusiasts. Please leave a comment down below if you have any questions. If you have anything to add, please feel free to add some more to this tutorial. Also follow us on social media, we have Google+, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit and Instagram. And I will see you in the next Saab video. 
Thanks for watching. Bye bye.